Hello again, it's Sophia here and I'm going to show you the second of our home-based printing activities using household objects. So for this session we are going to be creating our own wrapping paper, gift tags and cards. Uh, we're going to be using potatoes, which you can see in front of us here, and we are also going to be using these things. So I'll just bring those in front of the camera and these are pizza bases. So they're made of polystyrene, unfortunately, from an environmental point of view but I've got somebody who saves these for me and at least they're being used for something rather than going straight into the bin so we've got a couple of those and I'll just quickly scan around the table and show you what else we'll be using today so we will be using a pencil and we'll be using some paper so this is white paper it's quite thin it's like blank newsprint really um, it's similar to the paper that your chips get wrapped up in if you go to the chippy um, we've also got some brown parcel paper uh, I've got a cutting board I've got some glue sticks some scissors some hole punches some parcel tags or luggage tags uh, some card and coloured paper some paint obviously which you can see there, some sponges just scanning around the paint there, so acrylic paint but you could use poster paint, uh, some paint brushes and blank card and envelope. There we are, so that's a mixture of the things and we've also got this sheet of card here that we're going to put down just to sort of protect the surface really so if you've got an old piece of card or plastic that you can put on the table that's probably a really good idea. Okay then, so in front of me you can see some potatoes and these are potatoes that I've actually grown in my garden so some of them are on their way out, you can see that one's going a little bit green so that, that makes it ideal really to use for something like this. Um, really if they're in good shape they tend to be eaten but uh, this activity is really good for potatoes that are past their best uh, that are on the way out that you couldn't eat uh, so it's a it's a useful thing to do with them really so as you can see I've got a knife here and I've carved some of them already so what I did was I got the potato and cut it in half and then I got the knife and I don't know if you can see here but I've cut a star shape into this one now obviously you need to take care when you're using a knife and doing this kind of thing but as long as you're careful and you take your time you should be fine yeah so just just be cautious if for any reason you you know you're either too young to be using a knife or if you're not feeling confident about using one just ask a friend to help you out or you know if, if you're a young person watching this maybe maybe ask a responsible adult to give you a hand with this but you know there's no shame in asking for help when we need it we all need help sometimes so ask away that would be my advice on that one okay so I've got a range of patterns here I've got some stars or wonky stars as I like to call them uh, we've got a heart that I've cut some extra bits into just to make it a bit more interesting when we print from it I have got a triangle what else have we got another triangle that's slightly different we've got a spiral a bit of a swirl there on the go and we've also got another wonky star and I've deliberately left a couple of these just blank so I'm not cutting into those we're just going to print those to make circles and I'll show you what's happening with those in just a moment okay so what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to get a piece of paper out and we're going to start printing using these Okay, so I'm going to start off with a very simple way of doing this. I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to choose a colour. So what colour shall we go for? Let's go for that blue because it's nice and near, isn't it? Now, this looks quite a thin blue, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of this as well. A little bit of acrylic. There we are. It'll just thicken it up a little bit so that it's, it's dense enough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all over the star area here okay so we're just going to do that so we're going to take care not to paint anywhere other than on the star okay whoops it's a bit wobbly there isn't it I've got a little bit on there but it shouldn't go anywhere that we don't want it to okay so I'm making sure that it's sort of applied properly but not too not gloopy you know you don't want it to be too gloopy but you don't want it to be too thin either it's, it's finding that balance and then we're going to take this and we're going to place it face down very slowly so it doesn't move onto here. And then I'm just using the palm of my hand 
going to give it a, a little, a firm, a firm press down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we can lift it up. Perfect. So that's star number one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat that. Okay. So I'm going to leave a little gap because I think I'm going to put something in the middle here. So we're going to alternate perhaps. Uh, so you may find that you need to paint, paint up again. So we'll just put a little bit more. Ooh little bit more of that on there and we're going to repeat that process okay so we will repeat it I think about here and again just firmly press down don't it to move so you want to apply a little bit of pressure so that you get a good result Perfect. Okay. And you'll notice with this one that it's slightly wonky, a few imperfections, and that can actually be really nice with printing because it, it communicates that this is something that's been handmade, homemade, individually made, made with care and attention and love, really. So I suppose that can be the difference between something that's mass produced and something that you've taken the time to make yourself. Okay. So we're going to pop this one down now. Okay, and again we're going to lift it up. There we are. I think that one's a shooting star judging by this bit, but as I say, that's that's all okay. And then I think what we're going to do is I'm going to repeat the process here, here and here. So I'm going in the gaps but one along. So we're going to do that next. So I'll try and do that fairly quickly. Okay. So we're going to repeat that process. Okay, we're going to pop this one here and press down and lift up. There we are. And repeat. So that process is going to be continued. Now we could, I'm not going to do it here for obvious reasons, but I could continue with this and do a whole sheet of fantastic homemade wrapping paper. And indeed, that is something that I have done and do sometimes do, uh, especially near Christmas when it's really nice to do Christmas crafts. It's quite a really nice thing to do to make your own wrapping paper. OK, so there we are. So I'll just pan back. So that's the start of it. And then I think it might be really nice to have something in between here. So let's have a look what we've got that may work. We could go for a spiral. We could go for a triangle. We could go for another star, actually, which I, I think is what I'm going to do. So let me just pop that brush down. Let's find another brush. And I think that we will go for some pink mixed in with a tiny bit of red I think yeah that's it so it's nice and bright there we are and we will repeat this process okay so there we have the beginnings of our first sheet of wrapping paper so that looks really cool really funky and a really nice thing that you could do to go with that would be to take one of these so that's just a normal sort of parcel tag. And what you could do, if you wish to, is you could make a personalised gift tag to go with it, which is a really, really nice way of sort of bringing everything together. And often these sets, you know, they're, they're not cheap, are they, in the shops when you, you know, when you want to buy mat matching wrapping paper and gift tags, it can, it can all add up. So it's really nice to be able to make your own. Okay, so that's nice and simple, but if I pop that there, okay, so you've already got matching paper and gift tag there that you've you've made yourself. That's fantastic. Okay, so another thing that you could do, remember I was saying before that we've got some that we haven't cut anything into. A nice thing to do with those is if you get a paler colour, so what shall we go for... Do you know, I might not go paler. I think I'm going to go, I'll go red again just because I've got it ready. So if you painted the whole of this in red, okay, the whole thing, okay, it's a bit hard to do this because of how I'm filming it, but okay, right, that's that done. 
and then if you press it down, so pop it on there, you might get two out of this. So there's one. Just go back over that one because the edges are a bit uneven. You can wiggle these around a little bit if you want to, just to tidy them up. Okay, that's better than it was. Okay, so that's how we can make a sort of a, a uniform, you know, like a big shape, a sort of, they're all uniform, just big shapes like that, big blank spaces. And then what you can do is you can paint your star up again. Uh, I might go for black this time, just for a change. Okay, so we can just go straight over that. It's, it's not really going to be problematic in any way. Uh, Bear with me while I do that. Okay, a little bit on the edge there that I just want to get off. Okay, so we've done that. So you paint over that, like so. Okay, and then, and it is best to wait until the until these are dry really to do this, but I'm going to give it a go. Nothing venture, nothing gained. You press that down. Oh, that's wiggled a bit, so it might be a bit uneven. Oh, but there you go still come out there we are so that's something else again so you could do a series of those you could have these in between as well if you wanted you know if you do a load of those they'll soon start to look pretty cool okay so there we are that's another combination that you could use and we have got other shapes I will just try out a few of them because I think it's probably quite interesting to see how the different shapes turn out so I'll just show you that now I'm going to get them painted up and then we'll have a go so there we have some of the other shapes that have been cut into the potato we've got triangles and spirals and hearts so that's just to give you an idea of other shapes that you could cut into your potatoes and print with. Okay, so for our second home printing activity of this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own printed Christmas cards using the back of pizza uh, bases, I suppose they are, aren't they? Pizza bases. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And what I've done is I've taken one of these and using a pair of scissors, I have cut a rectangular shape. Now I've got a blank greetings card here obviously you can make your own but this is one that I just had so I thought I'd use it so I've got a blank greetings card with the envelope so I've just done a quick check to see that this will fit just within there which it will I might cut it a little bit smaller actually so it's got a border okay and then what I'm going to do using a pencil I'm going to draw into this and what you'll find is that the pencil particularly if it's got a bit of a point on it will sink into the polystyrene OK, it does that quite easily, sinks into it. You know, you can sort of make holes if you want to like that. Um, but we don't want to press down too hard, but we do want to make sure that it makes it makes a mark, that it goes into the polystyrene. So I'm going to draw a picture on here and then I will be right back when I've done that. OK, so I've created a really simple uh, snowman. OK, so I did that super quickly just to show you really um, the next stage of the process. So you can see that I've used a pencil here. If I just do that, you can see that it's gone into the polystyrene. Okay. And everything that I've drawn on here has all gone in. If I rub my hand over here, I can feel the dents. There we are. I can feel the shapes there. Okay. So that's how I know that it's, that the pencil's gone in properly. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get a sponge and I'm going to dip it in some paint. I'm going to do the same thing that we did in the other video, which means that I'm going to sort of dab it onto the paper plate, first of all, so that the paint is not too thick. So just bear with me while I, there's a clean plate that we can use. Okay, so I'm going to get some blue. I'm going to use a paintbrush to do that because it'll just save time. So I'm going to put a blob of blue on there. Now, obviously, if you wish, you can use printing ink. Okay, so do you know, I think, I'll tell you what, I'll try one with this first. And if it doesn't work as well, we'll go on to printing ink. But I really wanted to use something that most people would have at home. So this is acrylic paint. We'll just have to work quite quickly because it'll dry quickly. That's the only issue with it, really. Okay, so I'm going to use that. I'm just going to add a tiny bit as well of this darker blue. 
Okay, and we're going to mix that together and see what happens. This is a little bit of an experiment, if I'm being completely honest, the mixing of these two paints. So, uh, But I like to experiment, and sometimes it's good to take some risks, because if you don't take risks, you know, it, it can all get a bit boring, can't it? So it's really, really good. So I'm just going to paint over this now, like this, and then I'll come back in a second and show you what happens when we print it out. Okay, so what I've done here is I've used the blue paint, I've covered the reverse side, which is the side with the snowman on, um, I've placed it face down on a piece of paper, pressed down on it, and then when we lift that off, there we are, we have a print of sorts anyway, considering that we didn't use printing ink. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try it with some printing ink and we'll see if there's any difference, okay? Okay, so what I've done here is I've covered the whole of the plate in black printing ink and then I'm going to get a piece of paper from here. I'm going to place it down on top, very gently going to press down and I've actually got a rolling pin from the kitchen so I'm going to roll that over because normally people would use a printing roller but not everybody has one of those so we're going to use a rolling pin. If you haven't got a rolling pin you could even try and use uh, a bottle or something like that that you could roll across. So I'm just going to do that now and then I'll report back. Okay so I've just rolled there and I've turned the paper and the plate over and I'm just going to lift it off now and we'll have a look how that has turned out. Hopefully it's okay. Yes great okay so that's a lot better. Now obviously this is quite a primitive way of printing but, you know, you still get a picture from it, and I'm sure that if you play around with it a little bit more, take more time with it, you can come up with some really, really interesting results. And it's an activity that's really nice to do whatever your age, really. So it's something that little ones can do. It's something that you can do when you're older. So there's no limitations on it, really. OK, so what I could do now with that is I could cut it out and stick it on the blank card, or I could do it directly onto the blank card. And I think that's probably what I will do. OK, so that concludes our printmaking activity, second video, using things that we can find around the home. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that it's given you some ideas of things that you could try out yourself at home um, and hopefully it'll inspire you to be really creative and imaginative and to give things a go. OK, thanks very much. Bye now.